off yard sale one and we have a free pile with a mower in it what do you say let me grab that and go play with it Hey guys, so this was again from the side of the road free pile and I know nothing about it I haven't even looked at it other than the 30 seconds on the side of the road So you and I can go figure it out together. I figured this would be a good uh, Project to go do some wrenching on the garage and we'll see how we make out The bagger looks like it's just kind of Let's get rid of that And how does that come out of there? Like a lift off again. First things I see the pull start is uh, busted up and yanked out. It probably was the last time it was used. And then either it was getting hard starting and he ripped the cord out of it or he just ripped the cord out of it and decided to go get a new mower. It's wrapped around a wheel a couple times. The wheels look a little like they're in racing mode. <laughs> They shouldn't be that big of a deal to bend back into shape. Let's flip it on its side. Take a quick peek underneath. Make sure there's nothing drastically wrong with it. And I'm just going to look real quick to make sure that that mark and that one are fairly close. They do, so I don't suspect a bent crank or a bent blade. Actually, it looks like... Why is that blade sharpened on the wrong side? That blade might be on upside down. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe not. Maybe they just sharpened it wrong. How's your allergies? So we'll do our little preliminary on it. We should probably pull the plug on it and see if the engine spins okay. Let me get you set up in the stand and we'll get into it. I got a safety, a clamp on the, uh, the safety lockout up on the handles. Put a brake, pop that plug out. I just want to spin the engine over because we don't have, it's pretty oil fouled. Yeah. I wonder if somebody either ran it with a bad air cleaner. Seems like it's running rich. Might be over full of oil. Let's just make sure we don't have an issue here. I hear a little clunking, but we're gonna move forward. If you flip them up on end, you want to make sure that you flip it so the air cleaner is always facing up. It'll help keep, it'll help keep the oil from uh, getting into the air cleaner. Let's go see what we got for, for oil in it, if it has anything in it. Doesn't look too dirty. Let me go wipe that off and we'll give it a, a, a level check. That's just from being up in the tube. It looks like it's uh, at the bottom of the okay mark, which is fine. I was just more concerned if it was gonna be over full. Yeah, that's the actual level right there. All right, we should probably just go for it, fixing the pull start, because it's gonna be taken care of anyway. So I'm gonna start getting some of the plastic off of it and we'll work our way down to the pull start. And by pull start, I mean the air cleaner. <laughs> Let's go pop that off. 
I'm not a big fan of this setup because they have a tendency if they do get stored outside, the air cleaner gets clogged up with water. The filter setup. Let's see how this one's doing. It's damp, but it's not terrible. It doesn't look dirty neither. That's a good sign. Yeah, this is one of those riveted on ones. You can't unscrew the, the pull start and fix it. So we're going to get rid of the gas tank. And uh, then we have to get down to this sheet metal. And this will come with the pull start and we'll be able to fix it. So this is going to come off. Gas tank is going to come off. And then we should be able to get to it. We'll see what we got in the gas tank too. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> That's on there pretty good. It's empty. We're investing five dollars and forty-nine cents so far. Let's see what we got. Both tongs look good. Sometimes one of these break off. So we want to go. Let's wind up. All right, we want to go that way. Yeah. We're gonna wind that puppy up. Sometimes the spring lets go on the inside too. You'll wind it up and you'll hear it go on the inside and you know the little tab broke off the, the end of the spring. Let's call that. There, I'm just going to throw some vice grips. Uh oh, I did it. See how my dexterity works. And we actually kind of need it to line up with that one I'm a little too far. Just gonna back it off right here. Let's call it. Down a little lower is better than up too high. <laughs> There's a joke there somewhere. Let's go with that one. That might still be a little too high. Crack this puppy open. I remind myself to order some pull start rope. It's not, it's not like the regular blend. And hopefully this one's long enough because it it runs to the the handle up top. You know, it's, you don't the handle is not right on the sitting low on the shelf. The pull start here, it goes up on the side of the handlebar. And sometimes. This gauge is a little on the thin side on this one too. Okay, man. I want to feed it through there. And then through the lower one. Sometimes you can do it the other way around. The tit on that is too big. Too big a tits. Let's go fix it. Yeah, we'll give that a roll. At this point. There we go. Now make it through. It's like the game operation when you were a kid. When I was a kid. Yeah. 
There it is. Oh, got a little stabber here. It's gonna influence it to go to the right area. And if you don't have it tensioned enough, you can still kind of cheat. You can run the. You could pull. What you do is so this. If this isn't wound up enough, you could pull a loop up through here and spin it around on the outer shell to give yourself a little bit more tension. We're gonna go throw a knot in the end of it. Double. It's a fairly decent machine. It's self-propelled with a bagger and the big wheels. It's probably like a. At two ninety nine, maybe around there between two fifty and two ninety nine, I'd say new used is probably worth hundred bucks. <laughs> Try to let go of it and goes <laughs> all of it goes in. So we're just gonna quickly throw a big old knot in there. Gonna stop that just we're not gonna lose it. We'll worry about that when we get it up into the machine. I'd say we take an air gun while that's off and won't we blow some of that crap out of there. I'm gonna take it back off the um the lift and bring it out in the garage and we'll uh degunctifying. This is how that brake setup works. Here's the when I told you I had it clamped off. So up here is the clamp. You can see how it has a little brake shoe that comes and touches the flywheel. And that's supposed to stop it within, I forget how many seconds it's supposed to be. I think it's like six seconds. I'm not positive of that. But if, when you let go of the dead man up there, that the blade stops turning within six seconds. Some engines, the engine stops. Some engines, it has a clutch and like a belt drive and the just a belt turns on and off. Your know, riding mowers are like that. And at the same token, it kills sparks. So if you notice down here, where this little leg is, it grounds out and that little wire runs up to the coil and just grounds the coil out and kills the coil. That's how that setup works. And sometimes if your cable goes and you stop pulling all the way, you have a problem where it's like you're not, you don't come up off the ground all the way and the machine will have no spark, although you're pulling the handle, but the cable usually starts uh, failing. And usually it's up on this end too. This little plastic thing will get busted and kind of rip out and the, the distance between here I'll be able to show you, right? The distance between here and here uh, gets elongated. I'm right, gonna go blow it off, and uh, we'll probably flip it on its side. Maybe we'll pop that ball off the carb while we got it apart and uh, give that a good cleaning. Get the air cleaner assembly out of the way. We're gonna get to that float ball. Maybe. Fight me, will you? I can smell kind of ranky gas. And there's no gas in it. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think we're gonna get when you pull the float ball down? Yeah, the way this one's set up, it's kind of hard to get a wrench up underneath it and have an or and or socket for enough room. So we're gonna go pull these two bolts off, pull the carb away. And uh, I have a feeling it might be pretty cruddy, so we might be putting it in the old sonic cleaner anyway, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take those two out on each side and get the carb pulled away. It's gonna suck we do all this and it's got a rod knock. It smokes like a bastard. But the fact that it had a broken pull start is... My thought of why it was taken out of service, but you never know. Let's see if we can get that link linkage off of there.
Can't see which way that's going either. There we go. There we got it. I can stay behind. Let's go around the bench. Do some dissection. Yeah, it dribbled a little bit of fuel out when I. <laughs> it's a good looking color gas, isn't it? You like your gas looking like coffee? <laughs> That's not a good sign either. Let's, uh, I'm going to go pop in the vise and tap on it with a screwdriver. When you want to catch that so it doesn't hit the floor. That puppy is on there. Nice catch, by the way. Yeah, it's been a while. Good thing we took it off. We're going to want to go clean that. The needle and seat is stuck. And it has definitely turned to turpentine. So let's go get the ultrasonic cleaner cleaned up. We'll go knock this pin out of it. Get the float off. The rubber seal off, take the fuel line off, and we'll let that soak for a little bit. It's gonna need it. Got the cleaner on. Ultrasonic cleaner warming up, I should say. Get rid of that. Let's go tap that out. I'd say it went. Sometimes the pin for the float has a uh, a pinched end so it'll go one way but not the other back when my eyes were young you could see that not so much today though probably get underneath there with a the blade i might leave it just the way it is i think i have new ones of these go check and that would be a yes. So we could worry, have to worry about trashing that one. You can let that one just go. Leave for the landfill. Only a little of the machine going to the landfill, not the whole thing, right? Okay, man. Sometimes when you peel them off, they grow because you stretch them out trying to get them off. And uh, they hold like a memory of the bowl. You go to put them back on. If you, you look at them really close on the side of the edge, the edge would be flattened all down. I don't know if you might be able to see it between this one and the, and the new one. What that's showing. You see the thickness difference between the two of them? So even if you go to reuse it, it uh, can leak just because it's all compressed. All right, that can go in. Pop that right off of there. We're gonna leave that gasket on there. Probably do more damage trying to remove it, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Yeah, throw the pin in there too. I'm gonna let that soak for a while and uh, we'll jump on to something else. That smells horrible. Yeah, while well, that's soaking, you want to do something about the the Ackerman of the, the donks that are on the back of this? They're leaning quite a bit to the inside. I don't know if we can kind of just go grab those brackets and bend them or if we should take the wheel off. Yeah, let's take the wheel off and see if we can maybe put a pipe or something over the axle and give them a little bit of a twist. Not quite sure how they're on there. See if we can just stab it with a screwdriver and get the hubcap off. There you go. What do you think that is? 15 millimeter or 9 16th? 9 16th? You were wrong. 
15 millimeter. Told you. Looks like the bend is all in right here. It's like there were four wheel on too, huh? <laughs> Must have had some tall grass they were cutting. Let's. I might have something we could slip over here and try bending it. I'm not sure yet. Maybe the combination of both of them, you know? Let's go find out. Yeah, I was thinking this. I use this for kind of like bending, bending pipe and all. You can get a pipe on that. I'll try it without a pipe first. Hold on. I gotta get a foot up here. <laughs> Actually, bent. That bent real easy, didn't it? It put up a lot less struggle than I thought it was going to. I'd say you gotta go down a little. And we'll use our alignment gauge. And I think I overshot it a little. <laughs> Let's see. Now you're stuck. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know too much on that one. I thought I have it pretty good, right? I spun the tire. Wait for this. <laughs> Is it the tire or the rim? Yes, yeah, the tire and the rim. I think right about there. I don't know what we're going to do about that. Put it on the ground and jump on it. I want to crack it. How to get that way in the first place, right? Yeah, we're not gonna. That's not gonna do anything. <sighs> if that only fit in there, we could have went. Rah! We'll figure out something. We'll come up with something. I'm thinking heat gun, but why don't we just give her a little? It just bends back on its own. Quite sure how it got that way in the first place, though. So. Not that it won't work the way it is, it just seems kind of ratty to me, you know. Let's go. I can, I can see the bow in it right now. Let's go mark where it is, and maybe throw some heat on it. I bet you it got stored in a garage somewhere. And somebody stored a bunch of crap on it. Or is by a weight bench or workbench and somebody stood on it all the time. Okay, we need right there, right? Is that right? That kind of a double wobble in it now. I would say, yeah, right where the tape is. We gotta go towards the tape. We have to go this way. Think it did anything? Find out. Let's see if that made any improvement other than just making it hot. Better. So use a little bit more. I may screw with that just a little bit more, just because I have time to kill anyway, so this will be the last time we screw with it. Unless they made it worse. <laughs> I want to keep playing with it, but 
Enough's enough. Good enough. As long as the wheel looks fairly straight, which I think it is, we'll go with that. We'll just leave that well enough alone. Go take care of the deal on the other side. Looks like the tire's got the same issue, so we may have to address the same situation. I can tell the, you see the top of it's rolled in. Yeah, that one's a peach too. <laughs> I'll screw with that one a little bit too, see if we get some of that dip out of there. That's probably what we started out like on that side. That's where it is now. But at three mile an hour, I don't think it's going to matter all that much. <laughs> see grass that you're cutting your grass. It's it's like that. What happened? I don't know. Yeah, I think we'll leave it like that. Close enough. I already bent the uh, axle too. So I decided to flip it over and look at that blade a little bit more just because it seems kind of out of whack to me. This right here is a regular uh, Craftsman blade for like a Craftsman garden tractor. I'm not sure how well it's going to show up in the darkness here. But you see how this edge is ground? This is how this blade would be installed. Same edge, same area. But the grind, let's see how the grind's on the top side of it, not the bottom side of it. But what has me... It must be just the way it is. The corners are completely squared off. Usually when a blade wears, you'll start seeing the very corner of it wore away. And the more it gets used, the more that gets down to like a uh, butter knife or a kitchen knife as it goes through life. But this has got a completely squared off corner. So it's a new blade. Either somebody went and ground it on this side or this is just the way this style is. I'm just not aware of it. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> What's your thoughts? Anybody who owns this, this model and ever changed one of them? Is this something funky or is this just how it's supposed to be? I think it'll function either way. Uh, I Just usually I always see the top of the blade is ground, not the bottom. And if you say you were to flip it over, what would that do for us? So if we had, I think that puts the taper on the wrong side, right? So if this is like that, and then we flip it over. Yeah, you're going to be having the, the blunt end. The blunt end would be down. That's what I'm thinking. All right, we're going in. I want to look at the other side of that blade. I wonder if there's a taper on this side. It's kind of hard to feel. It feels like there's something there. I see it has a taper, but it's not. Yeah, it's a, I think that's going to be a factory grind. Let's look at this side. So if that was flipped over, that's no, still the same deal, right? Meh. Meh. But the grind is still on the wrong side. We're still on the other side. All right. Still a mystery. I think I'm going with that's how it's supposed to be. Whoops. Click. I'll clean up some of the carbon off of that. Noise alert. I think I threw the cover back on the pull start, threw the plug in it. I think we're about as far together as we can without getting the carb. We'll change the oil after I run it a little bit. I want to run it, get the the crap on the bottom stirred up in into the oil, and then we'll change it. But let's go get that carb. What do you say? Going in. Smell the paint off. That bowl looks decent. I think it got most of it. Let's see what the float looks like. Yeah. I think we're fine. Let's go uh, wash that up and see how we look. Got all the parts blown out and kind of cleaned up. It looks fairly decent. There's a rubber. Now oh, it's going to show. Right down the center there. 
uh, needle and seat and the seat is in there sometimes the seat is brass and the end of the needle will have a flexible material on it that can do the crushing or the seat itself is that flexible material and on this one I just want to give her a little clean up Clean up the board too. Mm, quite a bit of dirt came off of there. So I'm gonna go blow that out. And by by spinning motion, if you look under like a microscope, you would notice that you're putting like fine scratches, probably the best way to put it, in a circle. And each one of those make a little barrier because it's a complete circle all the way around. So when the pin goes and touches it, it makes a bunch of, a couple um, little lines that make contact all the way around. Whereas if you were, like say if you were gonna go clean this, you'd wanna clean it in this fashion. You wouldn't wanna clean it like that because you'd be running scratches down in the wrong direction. Anyway, way too much information. That should be cleaned up, blow that out with air and we'll start assembling it. This stuff came off pretty good too. So let's go. Assemble that and we'll check it. I don't want to come off of there. Casing that black dot. So I'm just going to blow air in. Air in like that. And I'm gonna flip it over so the valve can open. And I can blow through it. Seems to be okay. Look at that float. It looks pretty level with that. I kind of use that for a judgment call. These are a little bit more picky to adjust than the metal ones, but uh, that's more than fine. So we're gonna go with put the, the seal on the new one. and hope on this guy a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I get good airflow through it. That's the main jet. It feels pretty good. Fuel in the float ball gets drawn in through the holes on the side and up through the center of it. So I was just feeling to make sure that I had a good flow through there that there wasn't any kind of crud. Didn't look too dirty so I wasn't that concerned about it. Right, I'm going to go tighten that up and we'll start putting it back on the machine. One thing I didn't show, unfortunately, when I was going over to the parts washer, <laughs> the ultrasonic cleaner, the little handle on the basket decided to fall out and everything went everywhere. I couldn't find the pin, so that was a pin out of something else. You notice how loose it was. I came back and flattened one side of it and then tapped it in, so now it's it's fixed. It's not floating in there anymore, although the floats, floats floating, but the pin's not floating. I got all that buttoned on there. I just want to kind of go over one thing. It doesn't have a choke. It has a primer bulb. So the cover has a primer bulb in it. That's why I was trying to save that gasket. I'm just dropping crap everywhere. Save that gasket. I don't want to tear it because it makes a seal between <laughs> that hole right there. That goes something like that in turn goes to that hole. So you push the button and you give a quick shot of air into the carburetor and the float bowl gets like a little bit of a positive pressure and then it'll push fuel right up the main jet hole because there's you know, essentially air get pushed down inside there and that's under a vacuum and you give it a primer it gives it a couple of dribbles of fuel uh, into the carbon as it goes start. Now the bowl's vented anyway. I do believe that, that is going to be the vent right there, that one. So you push the bulb in 
the air can't escape fast enough out of there so you're you're able to, to push enough of a charge dumps the fuel in a little bit of air kind of squirts through there but the bulb needs to be able to breathe and vent also so i think over normal uh it just kind of draws to that little hole right there i believe that is how it works not positive of that but i'm pretty sure that's the situation on that so uh if the flow bulb gasket was no good and it was out, able to leak air around there with the old one then when you go to push the charge in instead of that just being a restriction the uh, air would be blowing all the way around it and not pushing anything out of the main i do believe that is how it works let's get that handle on there huh i don't know it's going to be long enough i don't want to punch you guys <laughs> sorry Intentional. This rope is the wrong diameter. Should be thicker than this. Stick and tractor supply. Getting cheap. I'm gonna hit that with a heat gun a little bit. Let's see. If we get enough. There's no fuel in it yet. should be okay. Would have helped if I put the fan cover on. That's no problem though. Fit through. How was that? It was like that but with two hands and up by the handle. You can help if you're looking at it. You can squeeze it through the, the spring. Now we're good. All back together. Uh, good time to drop it on the ground. We'll throw some fuel in it, fire it up, and see if it's a piece of crap or not. Yeah, throw some gas in her. See what we got. Putting the good stuff in it. Because it's all I have at the house. Can too. At $10 a gallon. We'll put that much in it. <laughs> That's a dollar. Give it a second to fill the full bowl. Yes, cap on it. How many pulls do you think? Which way is full throttle? Mm, that way's fast. We'll give her. We'll give her four squirts. adjustment on the linkage but we're not worried about laying it idle that works out pretty good I'd run it outside but it is pouring out so I'm not gonna be able to cut any grass with it I think it's pretty decent we're in it I uh, still want to change the oil I'm gonna run it for a little bit change the oil we get that taken care of it will shuffle by the door and uh, let it run for a little while let the oil warm up A lot of times they have drain plugs on them but they get corroded into the they're underneath and uh, they get corroded in so 
it's up and mounted the dipstick dipstick hole. It's pretty much common practice. Looks pretty clean. They don't hold all that much. Fall on me. You get the idea. Unfortunately, we have a gas leak. Is that too much light for you? It is leaking. Looks like the bowl is overflowing. Looks like the uh, you know seat are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So there's no oil in it. I'm gonna flip it back on its side again, and uh, let's get back into that. Actually, I dug in. I think it's the end of the fuel line. That's too much for you. Yeah, I think the fuel line's dripping. That's easier. I took the fuel line off. The line itself looked perfectly fine. That's why I didn't bother chasing it earlier. But what I did is I flipped it around. I put it like that. And it may have been that way. And kind of, you know, these are spring loaded clamps. They're not like a threaded down clamp. I actually prefer these better, but it doesn't, if it's got an old. Uh, footprint of where the barbs were sitting on it before and it was kind of clamped down you take it off and you put it back on if you're not where that barb was it could have a little bit of play around it. it's not kind of crushed down on the center of it I think is what was happening I don't see anything now I blew it off of air put more gas in it it's probably blew the other side you can see it on the deck where it kind of washed down probably run it with no air cleaner on it for a minute just make sure it's okay might have to prime it you guys can't see anything I know I keep screwing you up sorry about that I went to go <laughs> now it turns on <laughs> I was gonna go grab the flashlight that is dampened so that I could show you guys stuff and it wasn't turning on now it turns on that's funny no it was for me all right, uh, yeah, let's go throw the gas cap back on. We'll leave the air cleaner off and see if we'll fire up and let it run and just make sure we have no more leaks. And if we have no more, actually, we got to put oil on it. Almost, almost screwed up. Put oil on it and uh, then we'll run it. Nice catch. Thanks, guys. Hey, we got oil on it. Let's see if it'll go without um, priming it. Right, we're going to prime it then. Take that. <laughs> it said take that instead. Yeah, cool. still dry we're all set that was an easy fix huh I thought it was gonna be the needle and seat we'll let that sit a minute I think we're pretty good we're just draining and hopefully back together for the last time we'll give her a couple
I'd run it out in the grass, but I can't. So I'm happy with that. What are we into it for? 10 bucks? Pull start and uh, a little bit of oil, a little bit of gas. That's about it. All right, I did check the belt, pulled the cover off. Sorry I didn't show that, but that seemed to be fine. I think we're all ready to rock and roll. That should be good for uh, fall time right now. These are still valuable because you can suck up leaves and it puts them in the bag and it cuts them up so you can get like underneath your shrubs and stuff but you can't with the uh, other apparatus. So it's good for that purpose. So I want to cut my grass with it eventually and uh, suck up some leaves. <laughs> Not bad for the side of the road, huh? So I hope you guys uh, enjoy the video. If you do, would you just uh, give me a comment and a, uh, a thumbs up if you liked it. It helps me out and uh, helps me help you. You know what I mean? <laughs> guys, with that, I'm going to go sign off. I want to thank all you for kind of hanging around in the garage with me and uh, turning some wrenches. Till the next one. See ya.